Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today I'm bringing you a guide on Viswax. This guide will include an overview and in-depth look into the benefits of Viswax, how to obtain Viswax, and understanding how to get the most for the smallest investment cost possible. If you'd like to skip ahead to a specific part of the video, you can do so by following the timestamps in the video description. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I stream over on Twitch. If you'd like to catch me live, you can follow the link on screen or in the video description. Alternatively, you can like or comment on this video and subscribe for more content. Without further ado, let's get into the guide. Viswax is a consumable item that has various uses within RuneScape 3. Viswax has the ability to reroll daily challenges, extend daily challenges, extend aura timers, reset the Jack of Trades or the Wisdom Aura, reset the Harmony Pillar skill attunement, increase Divine Location daily gathering limits, and give you quick teleport charges for the Lodestone teleport system. But how do you get Viswax? It's simple. All you need is 50 rune crafting and a bunch of runes. Viswax is obtainable via heading to the top floor of the Wizard's Tower, entering the Rune Crafting Guild, and interacting with Goldberg's Machine. Goldberg's Machine will require a combination of runes and in return will spit out up to 100 Viswax. His machine only has enough juice to provide Viswax once per day, so choose your combination wisely. Goldberg's Machine takes 3 runes each day. Slot 1 is the same for everyone, Slot 2 has 3 different possibilities each day for everyone, and the final slot is completely random for each player. The goal is to place the correct runes to get the highest returns of Viswax each day, while also inputting in the most cost-effective runes into each rune slot to maximize your profits or return. The caveat to this machine is that the more you guess, the more runes you have to spend. The other caveat is that sometimes the machine requires very expensive runes. You can typically get away with a fairly low cost input via using a combination of elemental runes or other cheaper runes and still get plenty of Viswax in return. Luckily, the guesswork is already done for you each day. The combination of runes can be found in the Viswax Discord. It changes each day, so you will need to check these resources each reset. Another perk is for those who have 99 rune crafting. If you activate the skill cape, it will tell you your third rune slot each day, giving you the highest possible chance at getting a good return of Viswax. If you want a detailed explanation of the rune cost for Viswax, the wiki page has a very detailed outline mentioning which runes net you profit, which ones net you loss, and how much profit or loss. I'll provide a link to the wiki page in the video description. Now let's take a deeper look into the benefits of Viswax so we can understand their true value. I will say that the usefulness of the following benefits are completely subjective. If you find value in any of the uses, then it has value. I personally believe that an educated decision is the best decision though, and as Viswax has a hefty price at the time of this video, I will share my personal thoughts on the use of Viswax regarding each possible use. Daily challenges are given each day, and are randomized between all of your trainable skills in RuneScape. If you have level 99 in the skill, or 120 in the skills Slayer, Dungeoneering, Herblore, and Farming, then you have the ability to block out daily challenges pertaining to that skill. Assuming that you aren't maxed though, or only have a few max skills, then there's a possibility that you would prefer to get a daily challenge for a nice experience drop in a specific skill such as Herblore. Viswax allows you to reroll any daily challenges that you'd like to allow you another chance to get a challenge that you desire. The downside to this is that when you reroll a challenge, it will again be random, so you could possibly get another skill that you'd prefer to reroll. If you only have a few levels left to max, then the chances of rerolling to a skill you desire increases due to being able to deactivate daily challenges for skills you've already maxed. Personally, if you have a lot of skills to max, I would just do the challenges as they come and save the Viswax, because you'll need that experience down the road anyways. For challenges that you do prefer, you have the option to double the challenge. Challenges are pretty easy as they are, so doubling them is typically just for the sake of getting double the experience for very small amounts of effort. I personally extend my Herblore and Archaeology daily challenges. The cost of extending a daily challenge is 50 Viswax, which at current prices is 650k. This is a lot of GP, and cost-wise, it sounds like a lot for Archaeology and Herblore, but to me, the amount of experience I get for a few seconds of effort is very worth it compared to the amount of potential GP I'd earn from selling it on the GE. Auras can be extended by either 50% or 100%, and prices vary depending on the aura that you're extending. There's virtually two categories, scaling and combat auras. Scaling aura prices are 5 Viswax for 50% extended duration and 10 Viswax for 100% extended duration, while combat auras are double. Just a quick note, this isn't a 100% true classification. There are a few scaling auras that cost the same as the combat auras. 
when I just mentioned these two as the categories as the majority of auras in these categories fit that classification. If you'd like a 100% accurate list, I'll provide the wiki page to Viswax in the video description. I personally extend my combat auras quite often, preferably the combat auras like Berserk, Reckless, and Maniacal, depending on which I'm using and which content I'm getting into. These are great for higher end PVMs such as Elite Dungeons, and extending the auras here can be fruitful as the encounters can take a while and reward you greatly. Two auras that cannot be extended are the Jack of Trades aura and the Wisdom aura. These two daily auras have a totally different functionality than all the other auras. Jack of Trades gives you an experience book once per day to use in a skill of choosing after earning experience in various skills within the time limit, and Wisdom gives a 2.5% boost to experience for 30 minutes, up to a max of 100,000 bonus experience. The auras are usable once per day, but for 40 Viswax each, you can use them a second time. I'd personally recommend the Jack of Trades aura as the experience book is a very helpful way to give you a nice boost to experience for a skill of your choice. Harmony pillars are an aspect of farming that you come across in Priftinus. These pillars are tuned to a skill such as thieving, slayer, invention, or anything. Once it attunes to a skill you like to train, you plant the harmony seed, train the skill for a total of 200,000 experience, and harvest the moss. Harmony Moss has its own uses, but a big reason someone may want to reset their skilling attunement for a pillar is due to the completionist cape requirement of harvesting 50 Harmony Moss in total from these pillars. I personally don't find this to be very worthwhile, as this requirement can be done in tandem with other time-consuming activities for a completionist, and the Harmony Moss returned won't come close to covering the cost of resetting a pillar. Increasing the gathering limit from divine locations has a very similar reason to extending your daily challenges, except it's limited to the skills available to the divine location skill requirement, and you can extend it by either 50% or 100% in a single reset period. There's various divine locations for gathering skills like trees and rocks, but a very popular use of these divine locations is the yew trees for easy and plentiful woodcutting experience. This wax can up to double the daily experience gained. I've done this in the past, and as woodcutting can take a decent bit of time to level, I find this to be a very worthwhile investment of your Viswax. Home teleports by default take 10 seconds to cast, but with a single Viswax, you can grant yourself 10 charges of quick home teleports, which cuts down on the cast time of a home teleport to that of a normal teleport. This doesn't make it so the teleports are usable in combat, but it will save you time teleporting around. I personally use these all the time. I get immense use out of them and rarely have to restock on charges as 10 charges for one Viswax lasts a very long time. Before we conclude the video, I wanted to close on a bonus tip. If you want to save a little money when making Viswax, then I highly recommend getting into rune shop runs. These synergize perfectly with Viswax, as you can virtually buy all the runes that you need for combat while also getting enough for your daily attempts at Goldberg's machine. Even if you don't use them for combat, you can always sell the runes as well. Without using them for Viswax or combat, you can still net yourself a decent GP profit each day via buying runes from shops around Gilinor. And that's all I have for you today guys. Viswax is a very powerful resource in RuneScape for all types of players. I craft and use Viswax virtually every single day that I play in RuneScape, and it has brought me great amounts of profit as well as great amounts of R use for my PVM grinds. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment letting me know what you thought of it, and consider subscribing for more content like this. You can also follow me over on Twitch if you'd ever like to catch me live stream. I stream multiple times a week and my schedule can be found in my Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Rayo and I'll catch you next time. Take care.